Smartphones, uh, electric vehicles and wind turbines are just some of the modern technologies that simply wouldn't work without rare earths. But it's an industry that is heavily dominated by China, which has increased its export restrictions amid growing uh, trade tensions. Like the US, Europe is trying to reduce its dependence on Beijing, but there's only two plants that can process them. Well, the biggest of these is owned by the chemicals giant Solvay. Our business reporter, Jonathan Josephs, reports. The front line of Europe's fight for rare earth freedom. The expansion being launched here in France could be key to cutting dependence on China. Sacks full of rare earths are recycled into the permanent magnets which this plant is now focusing on. They are crucial for modern technology. That includes the speaker you're hearing me through, as well as electric vehicles and wind turbines. It's why President Trump has pushed them to the top of the political agenda. The EU was entirely dependent on China, but now this plant can recycle that material. It will be the 2030s before Europe has its own working rare earth mines. You can also use recycled material. By then, the boss told me the aim is for 30% of Europe's needs to come from here. Today, it's still uh, the beginning because you don't have a lot of end of life uh, electric motors and so on, but this will develop and by 2030, 35, you will have more and more material and this can represent a big part of the sourcing. Today there is no source coming from Europe, but we have from Brazil, from Canada, from Australia, uh, and in the future maybe Europe. But how important is it that those raw materials are dug out of the ground here in Europe? It's absolutely necessary to have uh, our own uh, mines. This is the only plant outside of China that can turn all the different rare earths from rocks into what we actually need. Its staff closely guard the secrets behind the 1,500 complex processes involved. Outsiders are rarely allowed in. We had to agree not to show you everything that happens here. This is the first separation room in the process. It's one of the largest of its kind outside of China. By the time the raw materials reach here, they've been turned into a liquid form. One by one, different processes tease out each of the 17 different rare earths that are essential to the modern technology we increasingly rely on. This chemistry set gives a clearer look at what's happening inside. Chemical reactions force apart the green presidinium and the red neodymium. Once separated, this kiln's immense heat turns it back into the powders for which demand is accelerating. But where will the raw materials to make even more come from? China dominates both mining and processing, thanks to years of government support. Now some Western rivals also want a helping hand. There's a regulatory part of getting projects approved, there's that side of things, but it's really the financing. It's that support financially in order to get the better projects off the ground. It doesn't matter where that support comes from, that's the key right now. In tightly controlled conditions, processed rare earths are packaged up for permanent magnet manufacturers. But can new EU laws really reduce foreign dependence for supplies? It's very important for the European economy because we have to build a sovereign and, and a resilient economy. Having a dependency on a single source, it's, it's, it's dangerous because you cannot know what will happen to this source for various reasons. It can be geopolitical reason. This is what he wants to make sure is available. These are prasadinium and neodymium, just two of the 17 rare earths this growing facility can produce by the sackload. As world leaders vie for control of these hugely important materials, it will take many more years and dollars of investment before Europe can substantially reduce its dependence on imports. Jonathan Josephs, BBC News, La Rochelle in Western France. And you can hear more about Europe's efforts to produce its own rare earths on Jonathan's podcast. Just search Business Daily on BBC Sounds or, of course, wherever you get your podcasts.